And onto that outsole battle, this is a tough one, everybody. So more lugs on the Wild Horse 5, but they're smaller. Less lugs on the 6, but they're bigger. Running shoe battle time. Here we go between the Wild Horse 5 from Nike and the Wild Horse 6, 2019 versus 2020. Uh, if you want to see my first impression of the Wild Horse 6, it published this morning, upper right hand corner, yeah, up there. And then the Wild Horse 5 full review from 2019 will also be in the upper right hand corner. Before we dive into the running shoe battle though, shout out to the East Harlem United Runners and Edgar and his beautiful family. Edgar sent me these items. He lives in New York. He's going to be running the New York City Marathon this fall. Edgar can't wait to share the starting line with you, but he shared a really motivating and inspiring story about his, his daughter and why he runs, why he offers every step. Uh, so anyway, Edgar, I love the letter. Thank you so much again. Shout out. I love the, I love the design too, man. It's, like, ah, it's awesome. It gets me going, Edgar. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's dive in. So eight millimeter drop in the Wild Horse 5, eight millimeter drop in the Wild Horse 6. All right, but major development here. They added, Nike added two millimeters of stack height to the Wild Horse 6. So we're looking at, as I said this morning, 30 and 22 versus 28 and 20. And guess what? Noticed it immediately out there on the trails. Much more cushioned. And here's the crazy thing. I actually really enjoyed the Wild Horse 5 in 2019. I thought it was a great ride. Um, I called it the commuter shoe. Uh, I put it in the commuter shoe category for 2019, meaning you could commute from your apartment, run a couple miles on pavement and concrete, and then arrive at the trail, go do three or four miles on the trails, and then commute back. Definitely a great commuter shoe if you're looking for that. Now, the stack height, though, is not nearly as plush or as cushioned as the Wild Horse 6. Now, moving on to the weight. Here's an interesting development. So we're looking at 8.9 ounces in, the, in my size in the 2019 iteration, whereas we're looking at 9.5 ounces in the 2020 version. So it gained 0.6 ounces over the past year. Now, I'm just gonna say it right now before I forget, Nike, so it's a React midsole, okay, through this entire Wild Horse 6 lineup, and there's a lot of extra React foam here in the heel. I don't think it's necessary. It's wrapping around here, and I think this React foam, it looks, I think it looks kind of cool. Some people don't like the look. I think it's kind of cool, but anyway, I think that's adding a significant amount of weight. I don't know if it's a half an ounce, but I think Nike, you could streamline and just cut back this React foam. I don't know if you're doing it just for looks or to help protect the upper and the heel, but nobody's running on, <laughs> it just, I don't know, like it's, uh, I, I, li I like the look, but I don't think it's necessary is the bottom line. Okay, moving on to the upper, maybe the biggest update to the shoe uh, is that, let me put them in the, in the right hands here. So I think that the collar of the Wild Horse 5, I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was comfortable, uh, but it did not have a built-in gator, okay? So this is a gator, and I was very skeptical pulling out of the box of this gator here on the Wild Horse 6. I love it. It's a bottom line. I love this update to the collar. It should help keep rocks out, mud out, and grit out of your shoe so there's no pebbles coming in. And, uh, oh man, I don't know. Like, I just really, really like that update that they did between the Wild Horse 5 and the Wild Horse 6. As far as the overall upper, though, is concerned, by far the winner goes to the Wild Horse 6. The combo of the tongue and the collar, it's, a, it's unbelievable how comfortable this upper is. And again, nothing crazy. Um, I wasn't disappointed with the Wild Horse 5 at all, but they really went for it. I gotta say, uh, just a lot of innovation, and I did mention this this morning, but I'm gonna mention it again. They added some extra padding here on the tongue, which also, it just adds a little cushion to that tongue so that you can cinch down the laces on top of your midfoot really nice just get that nice cinch down lockdown feel so that also adds to the it definitely well yeah i'll just say it adds that nike has won uh the nike wild horse six has won the tongue category as well on to the midsole battle between the five and the six it's not even really close as far as comfort and ride goes i know again noticed it immediately um pretty responsive 
I felt like I was, I, oh yeah, and it was not unstable. I mentioned that this morning. Even though the stack height went up, I did not feel unstable, unstable at all, despite going pretty fast on some downhill sections with quite a few rocks you see on your screen right now. So overall, winner, winner, chicken dinner, midsole to the Wild Horse 6, just more comfortable. No, yeah, you can't argue against it. And onto that outsole battle, this is a tough one, everybody. So more lugs on the Wild Horse 5, but they're smaller, less lugs on the 6, but they're bigger. So this is, this is a challenge. I'm gonna say for aggressive trail running, boom, Wild Horse 6. But if you're still interested in a commuter shoe, Wild Horse 5, meaning you're gonna run a little bit mixed on pavement, concrete, and dirt, okay? But hands down, if you're looking for more so actual trail running shoe, I gotta give the winner to the Wild Horse 6. As far as price point goes, Wild Horse 5 is incredibly affordable right now if your size is available down below on Running Warehouse, but the Wild Horse 6 um, is basically sold out, uh, at least on Running Warehouse. You can pick it up for $130 on, at Nike, so, but it, here's the deal. Okay, I'm gonna say right now, winner overall, winner, winner, hands down, is the Wild Horse 6. Winner, winner, chicken dip, like it's not even close. Um, they really put some good updates into this shoe. I'd say the only major drawback is that the weight of the shoe, they need to figure out how to drop the weight. If they can get that weight down closer to the Wild Horse 5, we're really, we're really in business then. And I think just by shaving off some of this React foam that's wrapping around the heel, they will, they will begin to reduce the weight. But overall, very, very pleased and excited thus far with the Nike Wild Horse 6. And there you have it, battle complete between the five and the six, and it's so exciting. But as more trail shoes start coming out in the next uh, month, two months, three months, as summer running opens up here in the Northern uh, Hemisphere, I'm gonna continue to do more of these running shoe battles comparing, because guess what? Not every, it's interesting, not every iteration, meaning new shoe from one year to the next, is a good update. In fact, oftentimes uh, there's updates that I'm like, huh, I don't know why you, why you changed that or why you added this or that or that, but this update is a good update. So I'm excited to be doing more and more of these running shoe battles moving forward. And on to that question of the day for this second video. I think I asked this a couple weeks ago, but I'm gonna ask it again because why? There's always new subscribers, welcome by the way, which means there's always new opportunities to learn down in the comments, all right? so. What trail running shoe are you running in right now? Not for the summer, but like, do you have a trail shoe in your running shoe rotation? Let us know why you picked up that shoe, added it to your rotation, and why. All right, there you go. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. We're gonna toss it back to this morning's vlog, first impression, more in-depth review of the Nike Wild Horse 6. It'll be right here, right here, right here. Thanks for being here for the second time today, onward and upward. Keep buttering that bread out there. All right, everyone, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.